Hello everyone. I'm going to be doing something a little different today, and instead of presenting a traditional medical topic, I'll be reviewing a newly available digital stethoscope, the Think Labs One. I've been using it for the past six months, alternating with traditional stethoscopes and the more widely known competing digital model, the Lippmann 3200. I think I've finally gotten significant enough experience to offer an informed opinion. Uh, the Lippmann 3200, which uh, I have right here, uh, this was the first exposure I had to digital stethoscopes. I had purchased the 3200 a couple years ago after losing my Lippmann Cardiology 3. I really wasn't sure what to expect as I had literally never used a digital stethoscope before purchasing my own. While I certainly enjoy learning about and using new technology, I'm also skeptical of using any new technology in clinical medicine before it's demonstrated a record of accuracy and specific diagnostic utility. On the whole, I initially was a bit disappointed with the 3200. The sound reproduction was just so-so, uh, the bundled software was terrible, the Bluetooth connection felt five years out of date uh, as soon as I got it out of the box, uh, the ambient noise reduction technology was unnoticeable, and then finally, um, it was incomprehensible why Lippmann insisted on making it look as much as possible as a traditional scope when there was absolutely no reason to do so. Unfortunately, over time, my opinion of the 3200 has only dropped further. It now gets significant amounts of feedback noise, even when not immediately adjacent to monitoring devices. And the display here, uh, which located right here on the front, uh, it stopped working after 18 months, which makes recording and playing back sounds practically impossible, which was essentially the main reason I purchased it. Overall, for me, the Lippmann 3200 has been a huge disappointment. So I've been anxiously awaiting a small startup to come up with a disruptive innovation to the concept of the stethoscope, because it did not feel like such a uh, disruption would come from a traditional medical equipment company. And now a small company called Think Labs has come out with the so-called One Digital Stethoscope. It's not the company's first product. Uh, but it's clearly the most innovative. As soon as I heard about it, I ordered from, from their website, which appears to be the only way to get a hold of one. So here's the box it arrived in. It may seem like I'm being superficial, but I must say I was already impressed. The fact that the packaging makes me feel like I'm opening an Apple product is an indication that Think Labs is committed to not just improving the function of the stethoscope, but its design also. Inside the box, we find this smaller case to carry the stethoscope around on in the wards or in clinic. Inside is the actual stethoscope. And the first thing to comment on is obviously the fact that it does not really look like a, a stethoscope at all. It's just a stethoscope head. Now, uh, since it's digital, there's actually no reason for the bulky rubber tubing and the ridiculous earpieces of conventional stethoscopes, which Littman inexplicably copied for the 3200. Instead, there is a standard 3.5 millimeter jack into which you could theoretically connect anything from your cell phone earbuds to high-end Bose no noise cancellation headphones. Uh, Think Labs included a surprisingly high-quality set of small earphones, which was initially located with some other accessories um, underneath this panel here, and we'll be talking about some, what some of these things are in a few minutes. So let's take a look at the device itself. So um, first it has a nice feel to it, although the padding included in the case suggests it's probably relatively fragile and I would not want to drop it. There's a diaphragm on one side through which uh, the sound will be passing and a display on the other. And there are two LED uh, dis uh, scales, one on the top displaying the frequencies that are currently being transmitted and the bottom one displays the uh, current volume on a scale of 1 to 10. There are four buttons uh, located around the outside, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I don't know if this was intentional, but the fact that they are not evenly spaced allows you to know which you're pressing, even if you can't uh, directly see uh, the device. For example, if you're reaching around and underneath a relatively immobile patient, uh, you can still tell uh, with some practice uh, which button is going to be the volume button, which one's going to be the frequency button, etc. 
Uh, to turn it on, push any button, and uh, you see some lights light up. Uh, once on, these two button buttons control the volume, and you never need it that high. Down around here is usually much better. And uh, the top two buttons control the frequency filters. So you can change which frequency is being transmitted. So this is high frequency, and then here is kind of all frequencies, low to high, and push it again, and now we're back to low frequency again. Uh, to turn it off, uh, the device will either automatically turn off after a relatively short period of time, which you can uh, adjust, which I've found to be a, a little bit tricky adjusting that. Um, or alternatively, you can manually turn it off by sim simultaneously holding down these two buttons diagonally like this, and it will turn itself off. The stethoscope has an internal lithium ion battery, which is charged via the same earphone jack uh, using this uh, USB charger here um, and cable. The cable just plugs right into the earphone jack like that, and the, uh, this just plugs in obviously to any kind of outlet. Let me talk about its performance. That is, how well does it actually work? First, the frequency range sounds to be substantially greater than what is delivered with either the conventional scopes or the 3200. Many of you have probably learned in school the traditional bell versus diaphragm dichotomy, uh, in which the bell mode of the stethoscope is best for low pitch sounds like an S3 or S4, while the diaphragm is best for high pitch sounds such as S2 splits, lung sound, and most murmurs. However, as you may have discovered in practice, these two options usually don't seem all that different at the bedside. Well, the difference between the high and low frequency filters with the Think Labs 1 is definitely noticeable and one of its major attributes. Another pro is the volume range. This thing can get really loud, much more so than the 3200, and much more so than a person with normal hearing will ever need. On the 10 point uh, volume scale, setting the scope to anything above 5 becomes painful. Now, I can't state this with certainty from personal experience, but I imagine that individuals with hearing impairment who have struggled with auscultation will find this to be a huge benefit. The actual reproduction of pathologic sounds is pretty good. I'd say that the sensitivity for hearing extra heart sounds matches that of the 3200, and both surpass non-digital stethoscopes. While the clarity of murmurs and lung sounds as heard through the Think Labs 1 is about equal to the conventional Littmann Cardiology 3, both of which surpass the 3200. So to rate the overall subjective sound quality and diagnostic sensitivity, first is the Think Labs 1, then the Cardiology 3, and last is probably the 3200. There is one major issue with performance. That is, there's a significant amount of transmitted white noise, even in a quiet environment. Now from hours of editing auscultation recordings from my teaching, I've gotten kind of used to uh, listening to heart and lung sounds through white noise, but it's still annoying. Uh, it probably reduces sensitivity for picking up pathology and will require an adjustment period for anyone uh, who is picking up the Think Labs 1 without previously using another digital stethoscope. Given how advanced the device appears to be in other aspects, I'm not sure why there isn't a better working real-time noise reduction solution. Uh, the website makes a number of practical solutions on how to reduce this problem, including lowering the volume and applying a different degree of pressure with the stethoscope on the chest wall, but I find most of those to be uh, only modestly helpful. Next up is the software and ease of recording. Unlike the 3200, which records sounds directly and then transmits them to a computer via Bluetooth, the Think Labs 1 is unable to record sound without being attached to an additional device, such as a smartphone, tablet, or a portable digital recorder like the Zoom H4n. Uh, the benefit is presumably that it allows more space within the stethoscope for better audio components. The downside is that you need to carry around something else if you want to record anything, and the actual recording process becomes more cumbersome. To connect everything together, you'll need this tiny accessory, which is named the ThinkLink, uh, one port for the incoming signal from the stethoscope, one port for outgoing signal to the earphones, and one port for outgoing signal to the recording device. The recommended software for recording and analyzing sounds, which is not included in the cost, is an app uncreatively called Stethoscope, which I used on an iPad. This is by far my least favorite aspect of the ThinkLabs 1. It's both featureless and clunky at the same time, 
and it is surprisingly non-intuitive despite its simplicity. Its only real redeeming quality is that it allows you to email the audio file or upload from your tablet directly to your computer when synced. Aside from the interface, which makes it hard to do even simple things, another major complaint with the software is that there is, once again, no available noise reduction effect. If the stethoscope itself lacked the computing power for this, there is no reason it could not be included in the app, which would make bedside analysis of subtle sounds easier. I recommend forgetting about stethoscope app altogether and instead either using your phone's native sound recorder app, which for both Android and iPhones works just as well, if not better, um, or alternatively recording it with a dedicated digital recorder, which is what I now do. For an example of how well the sound is recorded by the Think Labs One, here's a recording from a patient I saw recently with aortic stenosis. This is the unadulterated raw audio file that was recorded using the Zoom H4n. And here's that same recording after running it through a noise removal filter in the unrelated free desktop program Audacity. So after running it through a noise cancellation filter, the recording is pretty good. If I was going to include it in one of my videos or in a class, I would probably spend a little more time trying to clean it up even more, but for minimal processing, this is pretty good and certainly much better than the 3200. Since I have been using this stethoscope for about six months now, let me talk about its durability. So although the sound quality produced from the included earphones was really quite surprisingly good, uh, they unfortunately fell apart after two weeks of moderate use, which was kind of a bummer. Uh, so I've been using cheap replacements uh, from an old iPhone since then. Um, other than that significant disappointment, the stethoscope has held up perfectly over the first six months and seems easy to clean with conventional alcohol swabs. So here's the breakdown of how I would score various aspects of the Think Labs One, and I'll compare it to the Lipman 3200. For design, which is the One's greatest strength, it gets an A, while the 3200, looking like a conventional stethoscope, gets a C. For performance, including the quality of recordings, the One gets a B, compared to a C for the 3200. Uh, they both get Ds for their absolutely miserable software. Uh, for durability, the one gets downgraded to a B due to the earphones falling apart after a few weeks. The 3200 gets a D for the, uh, due to the failure of the uh, display after 18 months. Although 18 months is a much longer period than a couple of weeks, the non-functional display has rendered it practically incapable of recording and playing back sounds which is its only real advantage over a conventional scope. Finally, the cost of each. As of January 2014, as far as I know, the Think Labs One is available only from the company website and sells for $499, uh, not including the optional $99 Bluetooth upgrade. The Litman 3200 can be purchased at numerous websites and many medical bookstores and, have, and has an average retail price of around $400. So in summary, I honestly think the Think Labs One is the biggest single advancement in the stethoscope since its invention. The radically different approach to design is awesome, and the sound quality is great, though not yet perfect. Unfortunately, the software is very weak. Is it worth a $500 price tag? Uh, I think so, but probably only if you're a cardiologist, a gadget fan, are hearing impaired, or teach the physical exam. For everyone else, as much as I personally like the device, you probably will want to hold off until either the price comes down just a little bit or the sound quality improves with a more robust solution to noise reduction. I hope you enjoyed this review. Feel free to post questions or comments about either digital stethoscope below, including your own personal experience with either model.